describe the album as uh, very distinctive in its tone, very uh, different than other things you might hear uh, in Christian radio today. I don't think you can get the sound that we have from any four different guys that you see right here. I'm a big rhythm section fan of um, bands like Lifehouse, Switchfoot, um, Matchbox 20, and um, I guess you'll find that as a common thread throughout the whole band, which is another reason that we work pretty well together. We started, of course, Jason approached me and John. We were in a, uh, we were in a church praise band type thing before. We grew in, grew together as friends and started feeding, feeding off, you know, spiritually, I mean, we'd share things with each other, and we just, uh, it started there. I think that if you were going to uh, wrap up our ministry into uh, one theme, it's uh, grace and truth. The only thing I know to write about is, um, I have to write about what I've experienced. I have to write about the good things, the bad things, um, and how God and His grace is all in both of those things, the good and the bad, the ugly, the pretty, the smelly, the nice. It's, he's in all of that. When we signed our contract, you know, we had envisioned just this really extravagant thing, you know, where there was a dinner maybe, um, gifts were exchanged, cards. We signed our, yes, there were people there, that would have been great, um, but at about, 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the morning, on the back of a white 86 Tercel. Tercel? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Nissan Sentra. Oh, Sentra. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Can't confuse the two. No. Sentra. Very different. Um, we signed our contract on the, the trunk lid as it was slightly raining. And uh, it was very... Glorious? It was, yes, it was huge. It was glorious. Yes. There was somebody that drove by and beeped. I don't know who that was. Yeah, they were a fan. Yeah, I'm assuming. <laughs> yes, they were a fan. Yeah. Seeing as we were 200 yards away from the parking lot and they could tell who yes. we were yes. or what we were doing. The only thing that could have made it better is if Susan actually parked the Sentra underneath a light where we could see to sign the thing, but we had a flashlight, so it was good. Our roles in the band would probably be this, of course, Mitch is on bass, John's guitar, Chris's drums, um, vocals, and keys. Um, Mitch is the sort of logical foundation, I think, of the band. And really, you are. <laughs> when, uh, whenever one of us is kind of veering off, Mitch is a, a good uh, barometer of how everything's going. He kind of keeps things in check. Um, John is definitely um, the dreamer, schemer, but I'll get it done in the end, guy. Um, you can always count on John. It may not look like he's going to come through, but he, <laughs> he always comes through there in the end. Um, Chris is definitely the comedian. He's definitely the... <laughs> if, if, if it just gets too serious and we're like, yeah, what are we... Okay, Chris, do something. And not only is he just the comic relief, he, uh, he has a very serious and sensitive side. As well, and uh, we love to pick on all of them, but it's great. Um, I would probably say I'm the dad of the band. I don't really try to be; it just happens that way. He he's the one that says, "Okay, it's time to stop goofing off." Then when he goofs off, I'm the one that says, "Okay, it's time to stop goofing off." So we all like, and then I just balance. continuously goof. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up um, here, a good little Baptist kid. I. Um, he was always the yes ma'am, no ma'am type. Um, not that that's bad. Um, didn't really venture out much um, in the form of, of anything really from you know what I did as a teenager to my personal walk with Christ. Um, when I was about 20, maybe 21, um, my 
my wife and I had just been married a short while. Um, John, our guitarist, came to me and really just uh, introduced me to grace, basically. Um, I grew up, you know, having an idea of what grace was and, and uh, you know, what I thought grace was and who I thought God was. Um, and it wasn't until I really started digging for myself and discovering chapters of the Bible that had been left out um, in my childhood, uh, you know, that were never read, that were never touched on. It really just, God showed me how small I am and how huge He is. And the fact uh, that He loved me anyway, uh, the fact that He loves me when I'm good, when I'm bad, when I'm, I'm mediocre, He doesn't care, He loves me. About when I was about 15 years old, I, uh, I had an accident where uh, one night I fell off my front porch and about seven inches of a red tip bush, uh, a stump about where my mom had just recently pruned back some of the bushes, uh, went into my eye and into the lining of my brain. Um, had about six hours of brain surgery that night. Had uh, some reconstructive surgery, some facelifts, if you will. Um, to my surgery, and honestly, I, I haven't been the same since, in, in a lot of different ways, physically and spiritually. Spiritually, I, I laid in the hospital bed, and I saw people come in and out uh, after my surgery for the next two weeks while I was recovering, and I saw people praying, and I realized that they weren't just saying, hey, I'll pray for you, they weren't just saying words out loud, uh, they were praying for me, they were talking to God about me. And I saw a personal relationship outside of my family, because my family was strong. But I saw a personal relationship outside of my family for the first time. I saw God's people loving God's people for the first time. And uh, I knew that it was different. I knew it was special. At the time I was 16, I started uh, getting into things that, you know, most teenagers get into. Well, I shouldn't say most. A lot of teenagers get into. Uh, and did the same things that they all did. Uh, about the time I was 20 or 21, I met uh, John. They're, my parents asked me, begged me to come to a service at their church. Or, well, it was my church too. I was a member, but I never went. Uh, and a group, like a praise band that, that John and Jason played in, was there and afterwards I talked to John extensively and just you know one thing led to another I started going to their church and uh, John and Jason shared a lot with me and uh, we became good friends and played in a praise band played in the church band all that kind of stuff like that but it wasn't until John started sharing with me some some really uh, cool stuff that I I realized there's a lot of things in the Bible that I have never heard. There's a lot of things that I still have never heard, but uh, a lot of things that a lot of people don't touch on. And I learned kind of to look into things for myself and not just take, you know, what my pastor gives me as truth all the time, which there's nothing wrong with what your pastor tells you, but, you know... Uh, I think God wants us to delve into His Word for ourselves. I've been raised in church my whole entire life. Um, my dad's always been a pastor. Um, we lived in uh, in Baton Rouge, then moved to New Jersey. I spent um, about half of my um, about half of my childhood in New Jersey, and uh, then moved to Atlanta um, in about 1996 or seven, somewhere in there. And um, felt felt just like uh, God was kind of, I guess, maybe knocking on my heart about um, some some of my attitudes and the ways that I um, approached other people. And um, from then on, uh, God just began a road of changing my life um, by making me realize that that loving His people was what He wanted me to do. And, and show that outwardly. And um, I got hooked up with a ministry in downtown Atlanta called Safe House Outreach Center, 
worked there for about two years as an assistant to the short-term missions coordinator. Um, that would probably have to be the time in my life where I grew the most. God just God tore me down and sh- showed me that the, the things that, that I wanted and the things that, that I've been, you know, just kind of, um, the things that I had kind of just taken on ideal-wise um, my, through my whole childhood were, were selfish things. Um, I was selfish in my relationship with Christ. I was selfish in my relationship with others, with my family. And um, it, it was just very humbling to realize all of that. And um, through, through, through all that, through working in Safe House, I realized that God just had given me a heart for urban outreach, for reaching people that, that people don't want to reach or can't connect with. And um, that is that is something that that has just grown me as a Christian, and um, that I have a, a burning passion for. The only thing I know to write about, and I think John's the same way, is um, I have to write about what I've experienced. I have to write about the good things, the bad things, um, and how God and His grace is all in both of those things: the good and the bad, the ugly, the pretty, the smelly, the nice. It's He's in all of that. And I think um, the way we approach things is we're just very honest about that, whether it be you know, from a loved one um, taking their own life to you know, just a really wonderful day that we had in Him with our family or you know, something that just has struck us that we've read. Um, I know personally, I just don't know what else to write about. I have to write about what he's doing with me.